What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Pod Scum. This right here, as you all know, is the podcast where we dive into the deepest, darkest, murkiest waters with a plethora of legendary guests. I am, of course, your host, your bastard of ceremonies, the number one scumbag, Rex Ruger, and that's Rex with three X's. R E Triple X. You might also know me as AKA the King of Sleep, AKA the Hair Metal High Priest, and most importantly, Diamond David Lee Roth Jr. Take one look, and it is undeniable. And the hard science it's, is on its way to conclusively proving this that you're looking at the son of glam, the front man for the band. Just smoked a few grams. I got a million fans. I'm your ice cream man, Mr. Wap Bop Doo Bop Wap Bam Bam Shazam. Hot damn. Woo. Feeling good? Of course, everybody in the house looking good. That is, of course, made possible by you too can get the quaff like Roth. Remember to spray responsibly. And of course, I'm coming to you as always from the lush lavender lounge of love. And I am joined as always by the Keith Hernandez puppet, my sidekick, my confidant, my main man, my main man. This is, of course, the No Frills podcast. You don't get frills because here in the pod scum camp, we don't know that much about technology. Plus, you don't need frills when you get these kind of thrills. And that's looking at the man himself. Of course, today is no different. We've got ourselves another great guest coming all the way from the land of the green. Not that kind of green. Makes me sound like I'm talking about Jamaica. This man is from good old Ireland. I don't even know if that was a good Irish accent. Maybe we'll compare and we'll hear his. But uh, very excited about this episode. Love this guy's work. And you will too if you go check him out. And he's here right now. So let's go chop it up with him on another episode of Pod Scum. Let's do it. Hey. Here we go. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? There we go. Look at that. Here we are. A couple of handsome front men doing what we do, right? <laughs> exactly. That's <laughs> what we do, right? Mark Daly. Mark Daly. Listen, man, I've been searching high and low uh, for somebody. And I, I love rock bands, but I've been looking for a solo artist in particular. And I've recently discovered you. And I thank Apple Music for following the algorithms and pointing me in the right direction. But I've been looking for just a good solo artist who fucking does rock and roll. And you can't find one. <laughs> nice and now one. I found you. Nice one. Thank you very much. Yeah. And you're and you're joining us all the way from uh uh, uh Cork, Ireland. That's right. That's right. You got room for you got room for a couple more? Oh, plenty. There's always room here. <laughs> There's always room. I, I, you know what? I, I'm afraid of taking a trip to Ireland, me and my wife, because I'm afraid I may never want to come back. I just love everything about the Irish culture and Ireland, and uh, it just seems like such a beautiful place to live. But I'm 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 eager to know though how uh, your own culture and your own uh, you know your own Irish background does any of that bleed into the music and make what you do? Uh, does it bear any relevance on what you do? You know your background. I think a little bit because when I gr grew up, like we'd live music in all the pubs. So even when you're a kid, you'd go into the pubs and you'd hear people singing and, and playing instruments and stuff. So you're right. you're exposed to it at a really young age, like live music as opposed to just the radio. Right. Um, so you're kind of around music all the time in Ireland, whether it's street music or bar music or, you know, radio. It's there. It's everywhere. And uh, it's a big part of our culture here, for sure. And I certainly would love the accent, man. I would love to adapt the accent as my own. But <laughs> I've know. had a lot of friends come visit, and then, like you said, like just what you said, they never went back, they just stayed here. A lot of friends yeah. that have done that. Well, it is very lush over there and very green, but I'm also eager to know, uh, like what the you know, because this would be a big factor of me, uh, of me coming over there, Mark. Obviously, how are <laughs> how are our laws on the other green? Uh, not there, not there yet, but getting not there. there <laughs> not there yet, okay, fair <laughs> enough, not there yet, but are we making our. Are we making headway? Pretty, pretty close now. I'd imagine. Yeah, because I never yet. thought I never thought I'd see it this loose in the states when I was, you know, growing up in the eighties when it was so taboo and so, you know, you know, frowned upon. And now you can go into convenience stores here and buy, you know, CBD products and you yeah, know. yeah. Everybody, even the Irish people's mentality towards it is way more laid back now. Like before, yeah. you know, it would have been like, oh my god, like shocking. You know, if you walk past someone in the street, now it's like, 
Nobody yeah. cares. It's all good. Now, but, uh, now, how do you come under the uh, how do you come under the uh, uh, the watchful eye or uh, you know on the radar of the great Jeff Tate? Because you've done some work with Jeff Tate. And I, I have a soft spot with Jeff Tate because my first concert when I was 15 was, uh, well, I went to see Metallica, but Queensryche was opening for them on the Operation Mindcrime tour. So they were really the first band that I ever saw, you know, in, in my young years ever take a stage. You know what I mean? So he was really the first voice that I ever saw. And I'll fully admit I was there for Metallica, but they absolutely blew me away that, you know, their albums are just, you know, fantastic, so conceptual and just so. But, yeah. uh, but how did you get linked up with him? I just pure chance and luck um really yeah uh, jeff's wife was in ireland and we, we had this gig that we were going to cancel actually because we were the night before was the guitarist 20 21st birthday and we all got hammered yeah. and we, we had a major hangovers and we said let's cancel that gig it was like the countryside of of west cork yeah uh, in this bar and then we're like no we actually really need the money let's do the gig so last minute decision we get in the car and go do the gig anyway and uh Jeff's wife Susan was there and we we're just playing tunes and she came up and was like are these actually your own songs you know and I was like yeah and she was like seriously did you write these songs and I was like yeah and she was like okay so she was like come talk to me after the show and we had a, a couple of Guinness and I set up chatting with Susan for a bit and uh, then she was like look um, I'm managing Jeff you know managing Queensryche at the time so Queensryche uh, and said how would you like to come over to the US so I sent her an email with all her information and stuff like that and couple of months later we were out opening the 9 nine thirty club washington dc <laughs> wow so would, you chalk it like, up, would you chalk it up to luck of the irish uh yeah and yeah. the fact that we were and, and the fact that we were out there like uh, we were one of the only bands in ireland that i know of that were gigging every single night of the week whether it was for whether it was for really shite money or yeah. like you know or like big big venues uh original places we did covers we did like any place that had us just to fine-tune ourselves and get and get out there and i think the fact that we did that led to opportunities like that you know yeah how important was it for you to uh 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 to put pen to paper and write the song your world uh i love that you're shedding some light on autism awareness uh you've been pretty public about it being something that affects your own child uh yes. i think it's great uh you know it's always great when people talk about I, I i my day job is in healthcare. i work uh you know my day job is a nurse so uh, uh I, I i love it when like a message bleeds into the music uh what compelled you to do that though you know to share that 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 that, that side <laughs> of your uh, your family well it was it wasn't meant to be I, I i the intention wasn't to share it i just felt like my emotions come out through songwriting so yeah like my wife would be like why don't you cry or what's wrong with you you're like a stone <laughs> you know and i'm just like oh. and then my way of expressing things is just writing songs so shortly after his, his diagnosis i was like you know just i poured my heart out into that song and it came out within I honestly start to finish was like five minutes and my wife was at work and when she came home i played it to her and she cried and, and i was like that's oh, too personal for me to release you know it's way too personal and she said that's the exact reason why you should release it you know i was like yeah, yeah. um so we did that and and honestly the messages i've got all over the world from parents who can relate to the lyrics and um yeah that writing that song was uh, releasing that song was such a um a good move in the end cathartic yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, was the was the music biz always going to be the direction you were going to go in, or or were you entertaining anything else over there as a young lad over in Ireland? I was all in, all, all in. in. Like, yeah, just like nothing else. I was just nonstop playing music, and even at, well, like as I was in the Voodoo's when we met, um, when we started performing in the US, right. and then when I went out on my own after the Voodoo's finished up, it was just the same thing i was out playing every night in the bars and in venues writing songs in the studio just non-stop like throwing everything at it and what were those early influences i always hate the word of influences because i feel like every musician has been on record saying who their influences are but you know who are some of the bands that really got you or musicians that really got you really inspired early on early on was like that was by my dad because he was playing pink floyd Led zeppelin yellow yeah. okay um, classic stuff Oh, yeah, classic yeah. stuff, and and I, I was constantly listening to that in the car, um, so I loved loved that. Um, and then you'd hear like in Ireland, we really only have like at the time like three or four radio stations that played the exact same songs that were on repeat. You know, 
Yeah. Um, so we weren't like there's so when I got to the US for the first time, everyone was mentioning all these bands and they're like, You don't know this band? I'm like, where were you? And I was like, in Ireland, we just weren't exposed to right, to that. right. Even that's even crazy. With, even with Queens, like I I'd heard Silent Lucidity maybe once or twice, but never heard of the band or Operation Minecraft record. And everyone was wow. like, What? Uh, I yeah. just wasn't ex- I wasn't exposed to it. And now like going out and uh, watching it live every night on tour and just seeing I'm like, oh my God, how did I miss out on this? Such a great, great album. Well, you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, 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 writing the uh, uh, the song for your son. But what is your typical creative process? Like, take me through it. Do you have a specific, like, uh, uh, you know, are you one of these guys where ideas are popping into your head all the time? Are you somebody that has to go and sit and write and set a certain ambiance or go to a certain room in the house? Or, you know, you got a process or could be I anywhere. Don't, I don't really, I don't have any system because it, like, the one that I find most regular probably is that I wouldn't write for a couple of weeks and then I could feel it building up <laughs> like yeah, literally yeah. coming to the top and I was yeah. like, oh my God. And then yeah. I could write like three or four in a day and then not write for a month. Um, or then like other times I will write, try and write a song every single day. But yeah. um, it depends on, on where I am. Like coming off tour, which I just, I came home the other day from the European tour. And now I just want to write because I've been inspired to be on the road. And, and sure. so now I just want to regularly write. But if I find any kind of blockage or any like it's slowed down and I'm, the ideas I'm coming up with aren't great, then I let it build up. And then when it builds up, I'm like, I can feel it coming. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. And then anytime I let it build up crazy like that, the first song that comes out is like ends up on a on a CD or <laughs> on a release. Yeah. You know? Now the music business is obviously you, you, you know I'm I I I'm 50 years old so the I obviously I've seen a lot of changes in the landscape of the music business nowadays it seems like uh you know uh old school bands are still releasing LPs but some of the newer bands are going the EP route or the singles route is that something that you sit down and conscientiously think about like the you know the the format of which you're going to release music your last uh, your last EP was four songs but all four of them kick ass is, right. is that the right formula you know just a small batch of well crafted songs cuz there are a lot of bands doing that a lot of bands, like I said, doing the singles thing. And some of the old school guys I talked to on here still prefer to put out an 11, 12, 13 song album. Yeah, I wanted the, to go the album route 100%. I was you like, do. let's do full record. And I just wanted it to like straight away, you know, one single, put the album out. And um, I was advised not to do that because it was like not enough people know your music yet to just throw out like a full album without, you know, Building up promo, doing a couple of releases and stuff like that. So, who advises the, that? Who advises you to do that? Um, that would be like m- multiple people in the industry would would say like, you know, it would make more sense to do maybe two EPs and then and then follow up with a record. Okay. So, and I recently signed to uh, after the release of the EP, I signed to a, a new record label in the US, um, One Opportunity Records, and we are like just being, you know careful about how we release things and so we're not rushing through it because we just did that u.s tour right and we did the Euro- european tour and then we're going back out to the u.s and europe again this year so we'll follow that up with a second ep and then finally can do the album but i'm just like so anxious for the whole album come out <laughs> yeah so it, so in, in terms of branding um is it mark daly is it the mark daly band or is it mark daly and the ravens that's the confused but I wanted to change everything to Mark Day and the Ravens because okay. I did a I did a solo record in like 2019, I think it was, mm-hmm. uh, which was a much more laid back acoustic kind of record. And then I was like, no, I want to go back to the hard rock roots. I want to do a hard a, a full band like thing. And that, yeah. that's when COVID happened. And I was like, that's my love is like rocking out on stage. Sure. And just pouring my heart into like singing songs and stuff. So um I wanted to just change everything to Mark Day and the Ravens, but then when you go online to do it, then they're like, you need a new Spotify page, you need a new Apple Music page, you need like Facebook page, all this. Like, and I was like, oh, it's so much hassle. So yeah. when we're touring, we call ourselves Mark Day and the Ravens, but the releases go under Mark Day. Okay. But the band yeah. itself, we call the Ravens. So, so uh, you 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 brought up COVID a minute ago. What was the COVID period like when we were all hunkered down? You know, obviously, you know, you know, you're in a completely different country. What was it like for you guys over there when we were all hunkered down, going through COVID? Did you find it an abundantly fruitful time for you? Did you get a lot of writing and creativity done, or did you just kind of sit back and just you know not do anything? You know, I mean, how did you approach that time period? Well, it was I was in the U.S. Um, 
on the, on a tour when it all like kicked off and we oh, so you were here you were here when the shit storm was going on <laughs> yeah like all, all of a sudden we we're like we were reading like articles about it well, i was on the tour bus and i said lads i think this is actually really serious i think and they were all like nah no it's fine it, it'll, it'll yeah. blow over and then the manager was like oh no more shaking hands at the merch booths after shows and then like then it was like no going out towards any people and it was like all of a sudden every day it got a little bit worse and then it was home time and as soon as i got home i was obviously away from the family and the kids so it was so nice to be home and then i had a big bunch because it was just before saint patrick's day which yeah. is like my busiest time for irish kids i would bet yeah and just my booker rang me and was like everything's cancelled until further notice like all your gigs and i was like okay so i took a minute with it and i was like okay and just enjoyed the being home with the kids and you know just being in the fresh air and walking around and and obviously worried about what was going to happen because nobody really knew at that time right right and then as soon as i settled into it um i started doing like a facebook live stream every thursday okay and i ended up funding the the, the entire ep and the recording and all the costs towards um the ep through doing those those thursday nights right so I would go on and like people would ask me to learn a cover it could be like it could be r any random cover it could be van halen it could be all the all these like random songs and i would go learn it for the next week and then people would you know tune in and i would dedicate it to them and i actually ended up having so much fun with that i got to like learn loads of new songs uh, yeah. and i was i was trying out brand new originals all this all the four tracks that ended up on the ep i was debuting on the lives acoustically and then people were like, oh, I really like this one. And and it was funny. It was kind of like figuring out the EP with people online. It was it was like it was a real fun thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And and how about these guys in the Ravens? Uh, uh, who are these fellas? You know, let's shine a little. Uh, let's give them a little love. How, uh, how do you hook up with these guys? Uh, are these like childhood friends? Are these guys you auditioned? Uh, yeah. How do you how did you assemble this band? Well, the lead guitar player james brown he is irish as well so um we met in ireland years ago like at one of those battle of the bands you know yeah and it's <laughs> but, never bad to have a james brown in your band exactly never, exactly never. and i yeah. i embarrass him with that every night on stage as well <laughs> um yeah after. but i i watched him it was the final of this battle of the bands and um it was his band and my band in the final and he just kicked ass on guitar and his tone and everything and we became friends after I actually thought we lost because they were so good. So I just went home after yeah. we played. And then uh, the lads rang and were like, we actually won. I was like, no way. <laughs> wow. And uh, James, uh, we became friends after that. And he featured on some of the recordings of my um, debut solo album. And then when I decided to do this hard rock thing, I was like, he was the first person I thought of. So he's kind of like the right hand man. And we do yeah. a lot of um, writing together and that's really cool. And the other boys I've met through um, Jeff, um, touring with Jeff, because we actually we actually share a couple of band members when we're on the road. Which oh, is, that's um, always nice. That's always nice. Is, yeah, it's it's really nice. And and the lads are like unbelievable musicians. Um, we've got Jack Rosk. He's from Glasgow on the bass. <laughs> oh, a Scottish then, boy. There you go. Yeah. 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 It's good to have a Scot in there. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> and then two, two American fellas. So we're we're completely um random or completely all over the world which is which is difficult when it comes to rehearsing and stuff like that but and now forgive just... me for not for, forgive me for not being completely sure on this man but for some reason uh when i was coming up with some stuff to talk to you about uh is there some kind of a tie-in or association with the guys in candlebox with you we did a tour with candlebox uh okay. in, the okay. in the uk in the uk um and i absolutely just love candlebox love amazing, the lads. Band. amazing band i've had a couple of the guys on amazing guys yeah yeah amazing guys became yeah. very good, uh, good friends with them and just like watching kevin sing every night was i was like yeah this he's is what he, he's literally he came to a, he, he came to the casino here uh uh, uh a couple of a uh, couple of months ago and it was just amazing to hear him live it's like his voice hasn't changed at all over the years and he was kind of hinting at he was going to get off the road and and just maybe do stuff in the studio but then of course they've just booked a huge tour now with uh i think three doors down or somebody like that so that's they're right going out with, yeah. That. yeah they're yeah. going out on a big tour so you know and, and certainly we don't want kevin to go anywhere especially not as great as he sounds right now i mean you know oh, i think he sounds better now <laughs> much yeah he's got he really does he's really matured and really come into his voice and and uh and and 
And they're a band, unfortunately, you know, that kind of started over here in the 90s with the whole grunge thing. But they were almost like the bastard child of that whole scene. It seemed like they didn't get that acceptance that the Soundgardens and the Nirvanas got. You know what I mean? But, you know, they're a Seattle band, but they just didn't seem to ever get that big push that the rest of those bands got. Yeah. And I, I know, like, the last couple of records that they've done, like, I said this to Kevin when we were on tour. It was like, like loads of people come up and be like, I love your, like, you know, they, they would always say the earlier records yeah, and they're far songs. behind and yeah those songs, yeah and yeah. i was and i was like no i was like the the la like there's a song alive at last on on the second last record and then and yeah like, I, the last couple of records i listened to i was like this is your best work of all yeah. of them yeah i, I find yeah. like the last couple of records yeah 100%. now being the front man to a band obviously uh you know especially a band that bears uh, you know your own personal name on the marquee uh is it any kind of added pressure when you're playing live you know what i mean uh, a lot of times it, it, it's a heavy burden being you know the front man of a band uh are, are there guys out there that are front man a front man of bands you know that you look at and like emulate or say geez i like the way like that guy you, you know have you copped any of your front man stuff off of any other people i don't think i have I'm no, not, I'm not sure. Like I've watched, like from touring with Jeff and uh, and Kevin and stuff, that I have picked up like the how powerful they are on stage. How they can like when they're speaking, yeah. they're not they're not like I mean when I started off, I'd be very like quiet. I'd be like, oh, but everybody's having a good night. Yeah. But now I did learn from them that you can't be like that. You got to be a little more boisterous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I did I did learn that. But in terms of like when we're playing, like rocking out, I I just feel like I'm a com completely different person when we're playing live i completely like leave myself and i just rock out and i'm yeah that's and probably I come off like, stage and be like what just happened you know it's like i feel like yeah. that every night so i don't like performing wise no but uh, watching how crowd interaction and stuff yeah and what is your itinerary when you tour because you mentioned that you do have children you do have a family uh i don't know that bands really go out anymore you know the way they do for like you know months and months and months at a time are you somebody that chooses the dates carefully you know do you go do a handful of them and come home or you know I, I, how do you work all that out i've been lucky because it, the tours that have been like we've got the last couple of tours um it's just been like a month here and a month there because it kind of yeah. spread out so it's not been overwhelming like when I was in the voodoo's, we could be like, I think we did six months or something. And yeah. that was like, that was fine at the time. Cause I'd know, I was like, go out in the road for a year. No bothers. But um, right, right now I've just been lucky. Cause we, we've got a couple of more tours coming up this year and it's all working out the same way. It's just like three, four weeks home. Um, and then I can do some demos, some writing and then go back out and, and play, play some pub gigs when I'm home and stuff like that. So no, very I'm lucky ready, very you know? I read a very interesting quote, and this is from All Music Magazine, and uh, uh, I forget the journalist's name, uh, Elliot somebody, I, I, I would be guessing at best, so I, I won't try to guess his name, but All Music Magazine uh, uh, was quoted as calling you the Irish Eddie Vedder. What does that mean, the Irish Eddie Vedder? Where would that conclude, uh, you know, uh, where would that comparison come from? And do you like comparisons to other guys? Obviously, Eddie Vedder's accomplished a lot, you know, great front man, Pearl Jam is a great band, but uh, where does that come from? I think it comes because there's a lot of grunge influences in like uh, with our songs it's just kind of rock and roll or whatever but uh, yeah. in the bridges and stuff sometimes we do go very grungy uh, okay. that that might be where it comes from uh, like that my favorite thing when writing is just to go weird on a bridge it's like yeah. very very basic verse uh, hard hitting chorus and then do a weird bridge that's my favorite thing um so I think that's maybe where it comes from the last the tour we just did we just did we got like maybe three or four new reviews off the last few shows and they were all saying Steven Tyler. And I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's high praise. That's high praise. I, I would imagine that. that that would feel good to be, I mean, you, you, you know, there's certainly people out there that it wouldn't be very flattering to be compared to, but you're, you know, you're being put in good company there. You know, I mean, I, I, I quite like it. I like to see the, like to, cause I wouldn't ever think that myself. So reading the review, I always read the reviews. Um, like the last few shows have been like Italy and Germany, Poland and Hungary and stuff. So I've just been putting into Google Translate, being like, "What are they saying?" <laughs> and now a lot of people, seeing? and now a lot of people do not, you, you, you know, take the opposite approach. I'm interested as to why you do that, though, because a lot of artists will say, "I don't care what people are saying. I don't care how the album's doing. I don't look at reviews or whatever." Why do you do that, though? Do you did you use it as a barometer to see like you know like where you are in your career? Uh, yeah, kind of yeah. just to see the, the reaction, especially when you're opening up um, a show, because like it wasn't our headline show, so it'd be interesting. It's interesting to see when you're playing to a whole different um, 
a, a room full of people that don't know you usually right, right. um and the the reviewer is not there to see you and stuff so i think the reviews are more honest that way yeah because you're it's not like a record label right. sending down reviewers and trying to get a good review to post online it's very like you're very exposed in these interviews i feel yeah so i always feel like we have to be a hundred percent on our game every single night on tour to to get positive feedback like that so it, it if you are in the early stages of your career as i mentioned earlier music business vastly different how does a band i mean like if you wanted to take the band and really consider yourselves having quote unquote made it what is it nowadays for a young band is it getting on a big tour uh is it album sales which i don't even know if that even exists anymore is it streams is it you know i mean like what's the you know like what's the measuring stick what's the barometer getting on a big tour making it over here in the states all the above you know I, I don't i don't ever even think of um albums or releases as money makers like never comes into my head now it's just to yeah. showcase like yeah. what we we try and capture as much as possible in the studio what we sound like live and then go out and play so uh, it is the us is the market where we enjoy playing the most it's yeah. where we go go down the best i i feel uh it's where probably the majority of our fan base is now so getting on more tours in the US is our like ultimate aim right now to get on a few more. And who knows, maybe in a couple of years, like maybe 18 to 24 months to uh, our first little headline tour, which would be amazing. Yeah, 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 that would be awesome. Um, so um, uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm curious to know, though, uh, when you uh, um, when you put music out, um, uh, how much thought do you give uh, to, uh, you, you know, because obviously you said you want to do uh, 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 an LP. You'd prefer to go an album format. Do you ever think sometimes, and this is something that I've asked other artists on here too, with the dwindling attention span of, you know, of the public, it seems like a lot of people have put pressure on themselves to say, geez, I've got to get my best work out there. Or maybe that's what drives like the singles mentality. Geez, I've got to be putting something out constantly. Do you ever think when you're writing these songs, and it's probably healthy not to think this, but I always just like to get someone's perspective. Do you ever think like, geez, you know, what if people are just grabbing the top two or three songs and maybe some of my best work, some of my deep cuts are are completely getting glossed over or maybe not even being appreciated or listened to? Obviously, it's nothing you really have control over. But does that ever, ever weigh on you when you're sitting there penning a song? I, I see what you mean. Like even with the with the new um, recordings, there's there's two tracks on the album that haven't been released yet. And I know yeah. that they're not they're not singles for sure they're right, just right. they're just not but they would be definitely my two favorite tracks on the record right you know? right right <laughs> so, but it's like uh one of them is called messiah and that's probably about six minutes long not a yeah. chance would that be a release um uh, and it would be like a really deep lyrical one and then there's a, a song called peace in the panic which would be similar be like too long for radio too long to release um so the hope is that with those singles that we put out that people do go to the record and explore the, the rest of it and well, That's, I love well, that you want to go the LP route, it, and it, it just, it, it's so disheartening as somebody that grew up in the era that I did, you know, to think that people just, you know, don't sit down and really listen to an album the way it's meant to be listened to and you know, enjoying that whole experience, you know, dropping the needle and, and going from, because I think in some respect, and I've talked about this with other artists, I think all albums to a certain extent are meant to be conceptual, you know, we, we, you know, whereas, you know, you lay the tracks out in a certain order and you kind of, whether you know it or not, you're, you're doing it. Oh, right, 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 right. There's a certain flow and a certain, you know, a, 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 you know, a certain a cadence to the album, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause even when we were, I was recording it in Germany, you're, you know, the, you know, what songs you're recording and you know, the energy that's there and you know, when to bring it down and you know, when right. to go back up and stuff. So you're like subconsciously you're, you're designing the record as you go along. Sure, sure, sure. And and uh, when you sit down and write these songs, uh, are you a multi instrumentalist, or do you primarily just write on the guitar? Some guys write on the guitar. Some guys you know, they tinker around on the piano, acoustic guitar, and sometimes a melody on a, a piano. Just like yeah. not a piano, like a grand piano. No, like you know those little MIDI keyboards right. at the, at the <laughs> yes. studio. Yeah. Nothing fancy. But, yeah, uh, nothing fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, it's just an acoustic guitar, and uh, the the idea will just fall out and then i'll just build it and usually it's all within this in in the same hour <laughs> that the sound will be started. and are you usually the one that takes the lead on this kind of stuff or do you let the guys in the ravens uh is it more democratic or like more of a collaborative effort or do you bring the lion's share of the ideas and just kind of tell the guys like well you know what i mean like here's the songs here's what to play yeah but 
I was the last record and this EP was kind of just my songs and then that I'd that written at home and then when we go to play live and I was like lads put your own feel and touch to it like it don't copy the record and, and right, when, right. when we play live that it's very much like that like any solo or any or the like everything's actually quite different that way live which I think is really cool uh but the aim is now moving forward is to collaborate more because like even the other day at soundcheck we just started writing a song um in the dressing room took it on stage at soundcheck and i was like oh my god this is so much fun like i yeah. love cre creating together because now that i feel like we've i found the style that we want i've wanted to do and the boys know the style and then we're writing in that style now so it makes sense to to bring that like uh, hopefully this year we'll get a month together where we can just write a big bunch of songs and i would love to do a full band record properly and now if somebody hasn't seen uh you guys live uh you know uh i obviously haven't seen you guys live uh if somebody out there hasn't seen you guys live you know what would you say they should expect if they come and see mark daly and the ravens i think it's a raw and energetic show for sure yeah yeah um, we we give it all um the lyrics are very honest um the music is very honest i feel and we i i definitely feel like our live performance show is our strongest point yeah yeah and and uh the stuff with jeff tate the uh, operation mind crime thing is that something that you're still going forward with uh, i i worked on the trilogy record with him as a writer uh, a songwriter um a few years back and i really really enjoyed that that was my first time ever writing for any other project um yeah. And it was like so much fun and working with really, really amazing musicians on that as well. Um, so that was fun. But um, Jeff's doing another record right now, but I'm just doing my own thing right now and, and uh, concentrating on that record. And are there more plans in the future to uh, obviously you're wearing your heart and your sleeve with these songs? You know, you mentioned, you know, writing from personal experience. Uh, will any more of the songs uh, be geared towards, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, how how deep are you with the autism awareness? Uh, like, uh, you know, will that bleed into the music even more? Obviously, it's a great message to send out there. Or is it just a one time song or? No, I feel like I write um, all, all the time from personal experiences like that and you know it could be a really good day where everything yeah. goes amazing or it could be a really really bad day and it's like and that 100 percent reflects uh in the songwriting and the mood of of the of the song that it turns out to be you know it's like it's like ireland with the weather you know it's like yes <laughs> we have the it's like i was living in like the one time i lived in america when I left Ireland, it was Seattle, and I was like, "It's the same thing. It's just yeah. low rain clouds. and yeah, everything's green and rainy." Yeah, and I was like, "I understand where the grunge, you know, music came from now, you know, and I understand why we do have very moody music here in Ireland as well, you know, because it like you could have eight months and nine months of the year where it's just dark and gloomy, you know." Yeah, yeah, oh, um, God, yeah. It's the same way here in upstate New York. So believe me, it's uh, it's it's you know, it's it's. I go out this morning for work. I start my car. It's thirty degrees. I get out of work at seventy degrees. I mean, uh, that big part, of a shift. What part of upstate New York? Yeah. Uh probably the biggest uh, point of reference that I could give you from a city would be Syracuse. Oh yeah, I think we're there in September. Are you? Yeah, yeah. With Jeff again. Okay, okay. I'll look into that I, uh, online, and I'll uh, yeah, I'll pop in and uh, and uh, and say hello. Um, so. Uh, so uh, 2022 was the last time uh, you released an EP, correct? Uh, nothing to lose. December, yeah. December. Okay. Yeah. So how so how quickly on the heels of that do you roll out any new music? Like, what's a timetable on like when you want to get more stuff out? Well, we did we did the December. We released it in December and did the December January in the US. And then I was like, I'm ready to go with the next one. But then yeah. we weren't we weren't ready to go. So uh, we didn't do any of. Uh, the EP here in Europe so we just finished that now with the last couple of weeks um so the next tour that we we're going to be rolling out for we'd like to have another release and have um the two EPs out there and then fully ready for the album and and obviously as you can tell by the hair and the look and the poster behind me I am obviously a uh you know uh, uh, a a uh, uh well I'd like to say an aficionado and uh, on uh, all things frontman, obviously I am cut from the cloth of the great Diamond David Lee Roth, the greatest frontman to ever do it. So, uh, uh, any tips that you need on being a frontman for me? Yeah, let's see. What's your What's your best attribute live? 
My best attribute live is obviously, well, you know, you, you're looking at it. It's the handsome mug. It's the beautiful locks. And it's the fact that I, I spell my name Rex with three X's. What's more 80s glam sleaze than that? Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. You don't have enough X's in your name. I don't know. If that's don't. Something maybe maybe that hasn't made it over to Ireland yet, but that's the eighties. <laughs> you know, that's the eighties template. You know, you see a guy like Nikki Six, two Ks, two Xs. You know, you yeah. see, You know, it, it's it's very it's very L A Sunset Strip. I, I got to change the name, so you might have to change your name, and uh, you know, maybe a little more of a smoldering look. Obviously, you see the smoldering look back there. More chest yeah. hair, maybe. Chest hair is always good. There's definitely a relation going on there, isn't there? You can see it. You can see right. it, right? Yeah, yeah, it goes, yeah. It goes without saying. Actually. I've got a fleet of lawyers working on DNA testing, and I'm not asking for much, Mark. You know, I mean, just a little bit of that Panama money. You know, I mean, and then and then guess what? Good news, Mark. I'll fund the tour. Okay, I believe in you. Yeah, we'll get it kicked off. Perfect. How do we get Mark <laughs> Daly? How do we get Mark Daly in the Ravens' world domination? That's what we got to plot here. How do we get that? It is. It's got a plot, and you know. um, I feel like the, it's a it's a really cool fun time for rock music because we're just doing it like having fun doing it and just like I feel like anything else that comes along is just great you know. Well, what and, is the um, music scene like in Ireland though? I'm curious because we've obviously always been you know we've always been spoon fed. Okay, you two biggest band from Ireland ever, but you don't really hear about a lot of bands, and I'm not talking about bands like you know like uh, you know. Um, Oh, what the hell's the one there with uh uh the Pogues there? Is that the guy with the no teeth? He's missing all the yes, teeth. There. Shame obviously they, they got Pogues. obviously they got a, a cult, a, you know, a cult following or whatever. But I wouldn't say that they were ever like you know arena rock stars or anything like that. And I don't necessarily say that that's making it being an arena rock star. But you know, what is the music scene like over in Ireland? Because it seems like we we don't hear a lot about a lot of artists coming from Ireland. We hear a lot about obviously England's given us a lot of great bands. You know, I'm uh, you know the states. Uh, yeah. But uh, what is this? What is your assessment of the music scene in Ireland? At the moment, I feel like it's quite poor in terms of um, rock bands, but very, yes. very good in terms of successful like um, pop music, like all the other categories. But right now, um, like it's funny because you said you mentioned you too, and then there's like one of the biggest bands to come out of Ireland right now is Inhaler, who the front his man is yes. his, his son. <laughs> yes. and I was like, oh, lovely. Yes. I mean, one thing that always blows my mind in America is the at shows is the amount of Thin Lizzy tops I see, and I'm always like, yeah, yes, um, yes. So I I kind of categorize them as the as the best, and like like obviously people see you too, and I, I'm just like Thin Lizzy for me are the. I would agree with you. I yeah. I would agree with you, and 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 I do usually like my music like with some teeth. I I, I do like some hard rock and stuff. Uh, I have fallen in love with Hosier. I do like Hosier. Uh, he was yeah. my next uh, mention. Um, yeah, he, he's my he's guy. Done. I gotta admit, I got a soft spot for Hosier. I'm gonna tell you, Mark. Uh, he, he also came here uh, 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 about a year ago, and me and my wife went to see him. And I'll tell you. Uh, even people that didn't know the songs, though, he just really puts like a spell over that whole room that he plays in. And the He's music, got an aura. Yeah. and the music just has, yeah, I don't know, yeah, I, I think you're picking up what I'm putting down. The music just has this, you know, this erotic sensuality to it. I mean, it, 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 it just, it's really, really, really like a mystical thing. His music. Well, that's the best compliment I can give to to Irish musicians that do come out and and make it. They all seem to have this like uh, like authentic like it, they just seem to be unique you know um like even fontaine's dc or another band that just uh blew up uh out of ireland and they're just so unique and they're just they're just amazing and they're and they're doing so well so like we're spoiled with the amount of incredible musicians come out of ireland yeah but i i always feel like they're all in different categories like um like even myself and my wife went to see a, a singer called susan o'neill uh, play a, like a local show and I was like oh my god like just incredible like like you said but well, Hosier just this you feel like you're under a spell yeah the show yeah and it's like oh my god what did I just watch it's just incredible well it's so also we're, not we're, fair it's also not fair to compare inhaler because I mean let's face it man his father is worth uh you know 600 million dollars so he can kind of help his son out a little bit you know what I mean yeah. his son didn't have to make it you know the hard way he might say that he did but I mean it you know you got Bono's backing you know I mean it, it certainly helps catapult you a little bit I don't care whether he'd come on. I don't care whether he would come on here and not cop to that or not. You know, I mean, there's certainly but that influence is there. A lot of people that I know that check them out only check them out because of that. You know, sure, so, sure, and yeah, and it is a tough business. So any boost up like that is great. But of course, I feel, yeah, I feel like the that the there could be room for a, a, a raw 
energetic rock band from Ireland to come out in the US again. So and that uh, would and that would be Mark Daly and the Ravens. Uh, if if it must be, I'll do it. <laughs> it. It must be. Listen, man, it must be, man. And so and so, uh, um, uh, four songs on the last EP, which which you say isn't usually the route that you want to go. You're encouraged to come and and uh, you, you know give people a little small bits. You know, what I mean, in order to get some name recognition. But when do you roll out that full length album? Is there a timetable on that? I think it'll be um, the plan was this year. I think it'll be twenty four because of the because we've got two tours lined up um we've got a tour i don't know can i say the tour's not been announced yet there's been a, there's a couple of interesting tours coming up this year and then um i think it'll be 24 by the time we've kind of gone through that new ep as well so that's a realistic ambition um is to say early 24 instead of and you and is there because obviously uh, you know and again it's touching on this again the, the you know the changes in the music business obviously the formula used to be much simpler back in the day you know a record label saw you they liked you they put money behind you they you know they funded your video they funded your album they funded your tour uh it uh as a relatively new artist now uh how diy are you uh, i mean you know how diy does a band have to be you got to be probably be pretty ambitious and a good self-starter even if you are on a label it seems like what they do now is much more minimal than it used to be yeah, I, i'm super super lucky because this uh, brand new label um that I was telling you about one opportunity records that it's just a, a recently um it's a brand new label and it's a private yeah. kind of record label and we're after bringing in a, an unbelievable team of people um, working on all aspects of, you know, from social media, you know, PR, um, like everything. There's a whole- The way it used of, to be. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I just, I love the way the label are doing it. And they're just a hundred percent behind us. Um, really passionate, amazing people as well. So I feel like we're super lucky because I know a lot of bands that sign to labels here in Ireland and they just say worst decision of my life. Like, you know, yeah. um, I ended up just getting ignored, you know, signed to one of the big labels and then got ignored. I feel like we're so lucky because this label is solely focused on us. And it's like, I know they're going to expand and they're going to bring in more bands. But right now I feel very lucky to be the first one and to have like a, a team that have been years in the industry all coming in together to help us which is amazing is this label by any chance looking for the next hottest glam sleaze metal band uh fronted by myself uh entitled love sword how's that for a band name huh love sword it's it's perfect and i it's think we, I, so, I think i gotta have to send uh, your info straight over to mike and diane for so just remember <laughs> so just remember mark daly and the ravens when you're in the states and you're in new york and you need an opener or you know i i don't even like to think of myself as an opener i might upstage you and i might be the showstopper yeah that's you see that's the point where it gets dangerous then isn't it that's where it gets dangerous my friend yeah you're that's right that, if, if you blow it away too much i can just pull a sicky and just say my voice is gone yeah fine. you're right you're right there's <laughs> a, there, yeah right there's always an out there's always an out there's an out there's an out yes, or yeah. just do some rock and roll lying he's like he passed out took a load of drugs he passed out backstage <laughs> Listen, man, uh, I really appreciate you doing this, man. It's been a blast talking to you, man. I mean, you're just an awesome guest, man. I'm pulling for you, man. I'm so glad that I came across your music, uh, uh, and I'm really enjoying what I'm hearing so far, man. And uh, you've won a fan here, man. You've won a fan here. And, uh, I really appreciate I, I, it. I will do my best over here to fly the flag for Mark Daly and the Ravens, man. Uh, if people don't want to listen, you know, I'll resort to the old Irish tactics. You know what I mean? I'll car bomb them or, or I'll beat them up. <laughs> exactly. That's all. That then they'll listen it'll be great then they'll be fans it's all about converting them if it's one at a time or you know mass casualties one way or another we'll get them love it and, and, and thank you thank you so much i really appreciate it and I had a blast chatting to you and when i put the episode up i'll send you a link and you know feel free to share it around on your pages or wherever you would like and uh hopefully Absolutely. you know when you got something in, when you got something in the works we'll we'll get on here and do it again i hope and we'll keep in touch that would be amazing yeah i appreciate it mark so much thank you so much and best of luck with everything going forward Thank you so much. All Take right. Care. Talk to you soon, brother. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Cheers. There he goes, folks. And let me please implore you. That man's name is Mark Daly, D-A-L-Y. You can look for him under that name, uh, Mark Daly and the Ravens. Go check out his EP from 2022, Nothing to Lose. Uh, and he's got some other stuff out there, too. He's on all the musical platforms. Do go check this guy out all the way over in Cork, Ireland. Eh, but uh, he's going to be the big shit here. 
trust me on that, man. This guy's got some kick-ass songs, straight ahead, good old-fashioned rock and roll with a little bit of grunge twist, as you heard him say. Please go out and support Mark Daly, Mark Daly and the Ravens. Uh, you can find him. Uh, he's got a website out there. Uh, you know, use your fucking Google and use your brains, people. Go seek out that good music out there because they're out there, people. They're out there. All the way over in Ireland sometimes where we can't find them. But uh, if we look hard enough, we can find them. They're there. They're there. And uh, Mark Daly is one of them, and uh, wish him all the success. Uh, real fun chat with him. Been looking forward to that one. Hope you guys like that episode. Uh, and again, I can't implore you guys enough. Go check him out. Show him some love, man. Let's get his career off the ground, man, and uh, skyrocketing. And until next time, kids, remember to take it easy and keep it sleazy.